So this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart because I spent the majority of my uh, childhood life, I guess, uh, worrying and fretting about, you know, what's my purpose in life and, you know, what if I do the wrong thing and what if I mess up and, you know, what's God's will and all this, you know, just complicated, convoluted stuff. And uh, if, you, if you did anything similar, you know that it quickly got very confusing and it was very easy to kind of get to a place of looking for signs everywhere to maybe... You know, God could, you know, if, I don't know, just, ah, you know, and kind of freaking ourselves out. But there's a few things with finding God's will that we have a little bit of a false expectation about. Like, not really, that's not really how it works. The first is what I call video game theology. Now, if, if you if you play a lot of video games, you know that there's, like, you know, the, the, the character with, like, it's like the main quest line, right? Like Skyrim, you know what I mean? You're, you're... You know, the, the Skyrim belongs to the Nords. You know, it's like you're, you know, you're, you've got this big quest, and it's up to you to make things happen. But that's oftentimes not really how it works. Um, I mean, first off, in, in the real life, we have things like you know working together. That really accomplishes a lot. Um, you know, like even if you look at the church, for instance, look at the great things that Yams has done. We did it as a group. Like all the things that we did, we did as a group. You know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of this idea that I'm the main character of the quest, you know? And I, I, then there's kind of this real, this kind of uh, disconnect that happens with reality where we, where we don't really realize that our life is, is going by us. And so we kind of have this idea that it's okay, I'll, you know, I can just reload. Or we just overthink, you know, things too much and we just don't really do anything. Um, but the problem with this is... Is the is is the focus all about me or is it all about God? Because with this view, it's all about me. You know what I mean? I have to dis I have to you know do the main quest line. I have to make things happen. It's all up to me. You know everything will fall apart if I don't follow through. But it's not about God at all. So some examples of this: I have to do something big with my life. If I don't do something big and showy, I'm, I'm not doing anything worthwhile. Um. I'm going to change the world. You see people do this. They go to Bible college. They think that you know they're going to go out and change the world single-handedly, and they're going to just you know be the pastor who makes this mega church overnight and stuff. And it's just like, okay, calm down there, gently. You know, bring it down to this this planet, maybe. Um, and then we have this kind of naive idea that we can fix really anything that happens in the world. You know, like. Any, any, I'll never be responsible for something bad happening. I can just make everything better, and I can just put my mind to it and rise above any obstacle. And then it doesn't, and we get really depressed because that's not the way we thought it was going to go. Especially there's a lot of organizations, especially around here, that I've noticed. I don't know about else tomorrow because I, I live here. <laughs> they kind of give people these false expectations of how the world is going to work around them and give them special privileges. And then they get out into the real world, and it doesn't. And it's like, oh. You know, it kind of didn't really prepare me for the real world. And, uh, but behind all of this is this kind of expectation that we, that we have in us that our value is going to be earned by doing tasks. So I am not of worth unless I do this big thing. And by doing this big thing, I will be noteworthy. I, I will be worthwhile. People will finally love me. I will finally have a place. I will finally have something to stand on. And it's just a false expectation of how life actually works. But then a second idea here is this idea of rigid predestination. So predestination is the idea that, well, mo more specifically, it's the idea that you are either you can either choose to be saved or you were kind of forced by God to be saved. There are two different ideas there. And uh, but in a more broad sense, predestination is more talking about the way of how much free will do you have in your life. Do the things that you do, do you have a choice in them? Does it matter? You know, that kind of stuff. And what a lot of Christians do is they reach this place of a very rigid predestination, like their path before them is 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 preordained in every single step. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't ever call something to, somebody to something specific. I'm not saying that... Um, that God doesn't like go ahead of us and like have just this way of, of making things work out. But I am saying that it's not quite like that. Let me explain, okay? So it's the idea that every step is set before you. If you mess up, even accident accidentally, you will fall from God's will. There, there's no room for making a mistake, you know, and, and you can miss it too. So you really got to keep out because you might accidentally step past God's will and you'll forever look back and say, oh, I missed it. Here, here's the thing. 
Whenever we see God specifically telling some, something to somebody, he makes it abundantly clear. I mean, completely abundantly clear. He doesn't say it to everybody, but when he does, he makes it very, very clear. You've got Paul, for instance, minding his own business, killing Christians. Okay, minding his own business. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then God is like, Pacha! you know, ah, you're blind. And it's like, oh, okay, this is hard to miss. You've got Moses. He's out there doing his own thing in the desert. And then God's like, Burning bush. He's like, ah, okay, well, that's kind of hard to miss. You've got Gideon hiding out in, the, in this, you know, in this thing, trying to not get caught by the Midianites. And then, you know, an angel comes and says, hey, what's up, dude? And he's like, ah, you know, these are kind of big things. It's not something that you can accidentally step past and say, oh, dang it. I mean, look at Noah. What if he accidentally missed God's will? Whoop! I guess he got he got <laughs> drowned with everybody else. And so some examples of this that we that we see in the everyday life of this rigid predestination. Is this the one? There's the one somewhere out there. And I will my only be happy. Mate. My soulmate. I will only be happy if I'm with them. And if, if I miss this relationship, I'll never be happy again. Except that every relationship has its highs and its lows. And you really have to, well, you have to make it work. And then there's the issue that nowhere in the Bible does it ever mention that there's one person for us. The only way that you can possibly have a little bit of, of, of leeway on this argument is if you try and say that the account of the Abraham's servant finding Isaac's uh, wife, Rebecca, if you say that that is normative for everybody, which then you have the whole rest of the Bible going against that. And then you also have to have it confirmed by your slave servant, too. So it's like, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch. At least in my opinion. Uh, so you know, there, there's a good example right there. What job should I have? You, you see people doing this. You know, what if I get the wrong job? What if I? Here's the thing. I still don't know what what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> and I'm 29. <laughs> like I still haven't figured it out. I found that, and we're gonna look at this throughout the coming weeks. That finding God's will isn't so much an event or a thing. And in that same way, it's not really a job that you can miss. You see what I mean? And we'll, we'll look at this more in the coming weeks, but. You know, I, I, a lot of this is just overthinking and stressing ourselves out for nothing. Um, so along this is, hey, what's my purpose in life? And we're going to look at that after we kind of establish how you find God's will. What is God's will and how do you find it? After we establish that, we'll come back and, a and answer the question, so what's my purpose in life? Um, but there are some things that people just kind of grasp and, and run with because they're used to getting things very mystically. And I'll give you a couple examples. Number one. If, if you are opposed, that means it's not God's will. If it's God's will, everything will just magically work out. So I guess Moses wasn't living in God's will. Paul wasn't living in God's will. Jesus was not living in God's will. I I'm mean, not living in God's will. <laughs> everybody is. I mean, if opposition is the golden standard of if you have any problems, you're not walking in God's will. Well, then that pretty much screws everybody. And then um, another problem that, this, that, that comes with this is the idea that you have to look for signs that you must decipher. Give me a sign. Give me a sign. So God is like this cosmic jerk who hides his will, and you have to like go prowling around through the bushes and now at night to try and find this mystical hidden will of God. Like, what kind of a jerk do we think God is, honestly? And then uh, the whole signs thing. You know, this is this is the thing that people used to do with the pagan gods back in the day, and I just find it so funny that we try and establish it with God. You know, like if if. They, they had these things. It was uh, actually occultic, ancient occultic practices. You would read the entrails of the animals, or you would, if a bird flew on a certain day, or if, you know, they had these books and books of them. Babylon, for instance, had books and books of, of how to discern the God's will from, from, you know, different things like that. And that's exactly what Christians are doing. I have to be able to discern God's will by these magical signs, you know. Like the tea leaves. Like the tea leaves. <laughs> oh, there's a bird flying. God, do you want me to go into ministry into Africa, passing Africa Street? Holy crap, it's a sign from God. And it's like, well, hold on. Before you go and get screwed out in Africa, you might want to base it on something a little bit more substantial than a street sign. Let's no. just... Uh. I wonder who would want to visit Africa. <clears throat> or, or, or oh, the thing with Egypt. Egypt's a cool place, okay? Or if they're driving, they're like, God, I'm just looking for a sign if I should do this. And they look up and there's a billboard that says, yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign! I'm supposed to marry this person even though they're a total tool and they don't serve Jesus. <laughs> um, so then the next thing uh, that this often leads to is, is God's will will just work it out. Hey, if you tried and it didn't work out, it obviously wasn't God's will. Just let it go. And it's like, what? Most everything that you try as a pastor fails. 
Yeah, most everything. And you have to learn how to just keep trying new things and, and not giving up. If this was the golden standard, then we, there should be no pastors anymore. Because, I mean, <laughs> pastors have pretty much tried everything. I have a note here that is I don't know how to get rid of. That's terribly dis disturbing. But anyways, <laughs> then sometimes we go to the other, the opposite extreme. Instead of everything being rigidly predestined, you know, in this, you, you have to constantly be aware lest you fall off this mystical path of, of predestination. Then there's this other extreme that we get to. It's kind of like the anti that, where hey, just do whatever thou wilt. You know, if if you find something to do, go ahead and do it. Well, I, I, I found a job as a stripper. Go ahead and do it. It's fine. It's God's it's will. It's an open door. <laughs> it's an open door. Um, and then just, oh, and then just expect God to bless it. He'll just He'll just bless anything that you decide to do. Just go for it. And it's like, um, okay. Uh, and then we get this kind of idea. You know that really messes with the recording. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we get this idea that kind of goes along with this that, we can just decree things and it will be so. And I, I blame people like Kenneth Copeland a lot for this because, you know, you have a bunch of people who aren't very theologically grounded, and then they watch, you know, televangel televangelists looking for encouragement, and they find really bad theology, and then they just like live their life, Christian life, based on just that terrible, terrible theology. Yeah. So, you know, the whole idea of basically I'm the master of my own fate, the master of my own destiny. I can just decree something and it's going to be. Oftentimes, though, what the real problem is with finding God's will is we overcomplicate it because, well, we're kind of just bored. We get bored in life and we think if I'm bored and not content, that means I am not in God's will. Therefore, I have to find this big thing to do that will make me feel satisfied, and I will have reached the end of the road, and I, everything else will just work. And it, 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 that doesn't, that's not how it works. That's just, that's just uh, once again, it's a total figment of our imagination. Um, if you are not content in life, the thing is, living in God's will or finding some big thing to do, it's not going to make you content. This is, this is mind blowing for some people. If you are not in, if you are not content in your life, doing some big thing or finding God's will is not going to help that. You have to learn to be content. That's apart from anything you do or do not do in life. That's just how that is. Sometimes we look for the things that we do to satisfy us and make us content, and they never will because our life is not about a to-do list. Now, we'll look at this more in the future, and I'll just... Hold those thoughts. See, sometimes we just want to try something new. We want to have an adventure. We get want to get away from problems. So we we conjure up in our minds some mystical, you know, signs because like this is basically how it happens. Okay, we want to have an adventure. We've always wanted to uh, go to South America. So then we start making it our mysticism of wanting to go somewhere like spiritual. Well, maybe it's God's will that I go there. Maybe God wants me to be a missionary there. So then without prayer without asking people we just kind of make up our minds and then we start praying things like this um, instead of God help me to help me to listen to you and to grow we start praying things like this instead help open doors to happen in South America if that's your will and you know what I mean like and we make it all this mystical thing and then we start looking for these signs and then of course we find them because we're focused on them See what I mean? If you're looking for a sign to validate uh, your poor life choices, you're going to find it. They, they just, you always find what you're looking for. So then we get this place of, I'm just going to do something even if it's wrong. And it's just this cascading progress of getting further and further into our own problems, which is not based on the Bible. So behind all of this, and we're going to wrap it up with, with this, and then we're going to look at the basic idea of what I want to get at here. We all must have a magical call on us with a light from above and a special encounter for every major step. Okay, there's gonna basically everybody gets the Paul experience where we get blinded and thrown off our horse. Everybody gets that. And for every single time that I have to make a decision in life, I'm, I get to be lazy, and God's gonna make the decision for me. And all I have to do is just keep walking perfectly. See what I mean? It, and right there is a little bit of the problem right there is we have this perfectionist idea of 
you know, this perfect path that we can walk. Did you know that in life there is no such thing as a perfect path? Some things have more good things to them and some things have more bad things to them. But ultimately, every every path is a little bit different. And God just has a way of guiding us and, and whatnot that we still reach places of sometimes there is no right answer. And that's frustrating, but it's still the way it is. So the basic idea that I want you to get from all of this, okay, do the best with what you have and where you are. That's the first thing. Do the best with what you have. Do Are you talented in this area? Well, just focus on using that for now. Okay, We'll, we'll worry about finding God's will in, in the future. Just for now, focus on using the talents that you do have. You know, like brainstorming and, and, and really ask yourself, what, what do I just have a natural talent for? I pick up really fast. For me, it's very obvious. Guitar. I, I, I practiced piano for years, never got anywhere. I picked up the guitar. Within a few years, I got third place in national competition. That's a, that's a that's a gift. That's a talent. And everybody has their own talents. You probably will not be able to measure up to me with guitar, and I probably will not be able to measure up to you guys with your gifts. God doesn't give us all the same gifts, and that's okay. It's not like a, a competition. Like he's better at me because he can do this thing. N no, no, that's not how it works. So do the best with what you have and where you are. We are in Tularosa. Maybe if I lived in, in Tennessee, I could do this and this. Well, I don't. I live here. So where you live and then what you can use. For instance, last year we, we did a sock giveaway. Was that God's will for us to do the sock giveaway? The heck if I know. We had an opportunity. It was a good thing to do, so we did it. We didn't look for some, some sign from God. And then the, then, the, then the next basic idea, find a creative way to use your talents. Stop trying to be somebody else and find a creative way to use your own talents. And I think that that is really a good starting point. So next, we'll, next week we'll continue talking about finding God's will. It's not as mystical as we make it. So just remember that, and uh, we'll come back to that next week. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we have a funner... Uh, 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 try it pri uh, competition. So if you want to go grab that. No more eggs, guys. No more eggs. Um.